Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, your host, and joining me today is my good friend. Uh, He is a seminarian, soon to be vicar, Ben Hines. How are you doing, Ben? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, I I stole you away from spring break, and I'm really excited because we're going to talk about uh, Christian art, which is, uh, it's not only a passion of mine, but it's something that is also a pet peeve a lot of time because like good Christian art, it teaches, it it confesses. Like I could just stare at it for hours and I'm not going to lie to you. I've I've just, I write a lot of sermons just by sitting around good Christian art because it, it teaches and it focuses my mind. And then there's bad Christian art, um, that, that, doesn't um and so there's maybe maybe one day we'll sit down and sort of pin down the difference but instead i want to talk to you about my pet peeve white jesus tell me about white jesus and why that's help me help me help me ben that that is pretty much the hottest topic of christian art isn't it um he's from the middle east yes he is and we know that historically um because he was a real person is a real person and um was in a real place of the world. Um, so why do we put him as white in art? Um, I think that that at the end of the day is because all art confesses something. And I would push back and say, why Jesus isn't bad? It's controversial uh, to say that because I know that if you've spent any time on the internet as a Christian, you've seen this post that goes around where it's like scientists have constructed the space and say, this is what Jesus probably looked like. Take that Christians. But it's not the own that people think it is. Right. And that's just it. Like I I understand how um, it's a fine line to walk that like white Jesus used to bother me because it, it felt like you were trying to take him away from everybody who wasn't white. And that's not it, right? No, because um, especially in like the Lutheran tradition, if you take a look at your church's history, probably if you're somewhere in the United States, it was started up by German Lutherans who came over across the boat however many decades and centuries ago. And the thing about the smiling picture of Jesus holding the lamb that you've got in your Sunday school room is that that is the people who started your church confessing something about their faith. They believe that Jesus came for them. I don't think that any time that somebody is looking at a picture of Jesus that he's white, they go, oh yeah, that's actually what Jesus looked like. He was actually a European man living in uh, first century Holy Land. Only wore bathrobes. Right. That's just simply not true. Jesus also didn't walk around with this big halo behind his head everywhere he went. But there's a symbol there. It's it's them confessing that Christ was incarnate, not just as man, but as man for you. That's why I don't have a problem with Chinese Jesus or Native American Jesus or Black Jesus. Yeah, this was actually one of the things that actually uh, started to help me start to process this because I remember sort of part of it is I was a convert. And so I didn't really start getting exposed to a lot of imagery of Jesus until I was in seminary in the ministry. And I, I got out to these places and was like, I'm pretty sure he was from the Middle East, guys. Um, but it was confrontations with um, Asian depictions of of Christ as Asian that I was like, oh, he, he's he's. This is a confession, not that he would be not for other people, but that he would be for me. Yeah, I was trying to track it down earlier today because I know I heard it somewhere, but I couldn't find where from. Um, But I know that in some Asian culture, when they depict art of divinity, they make people's skin green. That's the color of the skin of the gods. And them when they make a picture of Jesus, making Jesus green, it's not them saying Jesus was green. It's them saying Jesus was divine, is divine, and is a man also for you. So we're starting to touch on the thing that kind of opened this whole can of worms in that there is a difference between good Christian art and bad Christian art, and that good Christian art confesses it 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 teaches something um and part of art is that yes you can sort of take it out of context you can sort of twist it around and and criticize whether there's probably no right room for it but there's also some chance to reflect and this is why i love art is because it's a chance to sort of reflect it's a chance to sort of focus the chaos that is my brain on something that lets me slow down and and stare for a little bit um and and that's a gift what what can art then do uh, especially when it comes to to pictures of of christ do for 
the chaos that is my brain. Well, I think one of the things we struggle with as Christians quite a lot is we can't see Jesus. We think that like, you know, if we were there and we got to see him face to face, we'd have all of our problems solved. He'd be right there. We could hug him. Uh, it'd be great. Um, but that's not what we have. And we're told in scripture that like, blessed are those who believe and do not see. But having Christian art depict Christ and the heroes of our faith, uh, the apostles and the saints and all of them, it shows us a bit of these were real people and they are part of your life still, even if you can't see them. The visualization kind of helps cement in your brain that these things are true. There is a gift given to humanity that, that none of creation gets. Um, I, I, I wonder if even the angels really do. And that's imagination. Um, like the, the, the animal kingdoms don't actually get to imagine, but you're actually called to. You, you're, you're saying, you're, you're told, consider the resurrection, which is how um you, you get the whole book of of, of revelation um where, where we have imagery that that's that's painted of a, a day that is yet to come uh even uh in, in old testament books there are, are sort of those um th those those books like daniel where there's quite a bit given to sort of deal with the the imagination even jesus sort of talking about uh saying do not worry it's a recognition that you will take your imagination and you will try and use it for sin because sinners um but art here then it, in a in a couple of big ways it gets to be sort of the training wheels for your imagination imagination it gets to be maybe the bumpers the guideposts if you're gonna have a, a a thought about this maybe think about it this way um and, and here you get to every bit as much a, as an artist y you get to to well teach yeah yeah i um read a book a while back called art plus faith and in that book it talked about um artists as somewhat i think it said under creators that we are like the children that imitate their father's work, mm -hmm. albeit in a lesser and not as good way. When we make art, we are doing something because we are in the image of God and God is creator. And he has given us this, this spark that we are able to think about things and make and design and do things visually because we're in a concrete and visual world. And this book also talked about artists as like a catalyst for seeing the new creation from a distance um, to bring beauty into God's world is the reason why God allowed us to make art in the first place. Absolutely. And so when we get to look at a piece of art, we'll get to see then different things in the same way that the uh, different hymns confess the same truth differently. Um, even different books in scripture tackle different points uh, at, at certain times in different ways. Art's going to do the same thing. So you might have one white Jesus that is is confessing of the incarnation. He became like us. And, and in other places, Asian Jesus for the same. But even others, just brown Jesus, because, well, he was brown. And, and we're going to talk about something else in this piece, maybe, right? Yeah. Yeah. When I am doing uh, artistic depictions of Jesus, I usually make the Jesus that I put into my images brown. Um, I was a history major in college. I like to have accurate accuracy and details and things like that. Um, but I know that um, sometimes I get flack for it and people will be like, Jesus wasn't brown. That's simply not true. But I know that if I depicted white Jesus, I'd have the same thing in the other direction. It, it, it's almost like they're missing the point. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, what, what, what the point is then for, for us to kind of take home is that when we look at Christian art, what should we do? Christian art is something that drives you ultimately back to the word. When you see a picture of art, you should be evaluating it based on what you know is true from the word given to us by God. Um, art is only as good as what it's trying to depict. And if it is staying true, then it doesn't really matter what it's looking like. If it's confessing the truth of the gospel, that is beautiful. It's, it's beautiful when a child draws with crayons a little stick figure on the cross because that is them confessing, Jesus loves me. Mm -hmm. But it's also beautiful when somebody paints a massive 12-foot um, painting of Christ on the cross and 
even might make him white. Fair enough. Ben Hines is a seminarian at uh, Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. He's getting ready for Vicarage. Uh, ben, you, you go by Concord Forge online for a lot of your pieces. Where can people find your work? Yeah, you can find me um, pretty much on most social media platforms as Concord Forge Art and Design, uh, mostly on Twitter and Instagram. But I also have a website that's just called ConcordForge.com. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Drive to School and uh, have a good one. Thanks, you too.